Whoopi Goldberg made headlines with her scathing critique of Trump's intentions for a potential second term, likening it to a bulldozer demolishing a house of cards. She didn't hold back, revealing shocking details about his plans to use the military and monitor women. To ensure our message reaches a wide audience, we urge all passionate Democrats to like this video. Now let's delve into the glaring issues surrounding Trump. What sparked Whoopi's outrage? Picture this Donald Trump, with his signature spray tan, sits down for an interview with Time magazine. Instead of vague promises to restore America's greatness, Trump unveils Orwellian ideas that even George Orwell might find excessive. Top of Trump's agenda for a second term? Allowing states to monitor women's pregnancies, reminiscent of a dystopian blend of Big Brother and The Handmaid's Tale. Privacy takes a backseat as government oversight looms large. And remember those individuals who stormed the Capitol on January 6. Trump hints at pardoning them if re-elected, a move that raises serious law and order concerns. But that's not all. When asked about potential political violence if he loses the next election, Trump's response was characteristically ambiguous. It depends his desire for greater executive power also raises eyebrows, suggesting he views the presidency as insufficiently potent. On abortion, Trump leans heavily on states' rights, potentially allowing some to ban abortion outright, with minimal exceptions. This stance, juxtaposed with nods to Reagan-era policies and selective exceptions, aims to portray him as a centrist while signaling intent to challenge Roe v. Lee Wade. What exactly did Whoopi Goldberg say that caused such a stir? She didn't just criticize Trump, she exposed uncomfortable truths that resonated deeply with her audience. Imagine this scene, yes yeah, sir, nobody in your family was hung, Whoopi declares, her eyes ablaze with righteous indignation, staring directly at the camera. Her words cut through like a knife, exposing Trump's ignorance. This isn't about being anti-white, it's about basic human decency. Did you feel that? That was the sound of Trump's ego shattering into a million pieces. Whoopi didn't just disagree with him, she dismantled his words and tossed them aside. Let's break down this verbal showdown. She starts with a biting yeah, sir a thinly veiled jab that says, listen up, you orange buffoon her sarcasm is palpable. Then she delivers the knockout blow nobody in your family was hung out. Whoopi reminds Trump that his family hasn't endured the historical racial horrors that black Americans have faced. His claims of anti-white bias ring as hollow as his natural hair color. But she's not finished. Nobody in your family was chased because of the color of their skin she continues, driving home the stark reality of ongoing racial injustice. It's a reality foreign to Trump and his circle. And finally, he how dare you these three simple words are loaded with the frustration of millions of Americans weary of Trump's divisive rhetoric. This is where Whoopi truly delivers the knockout blow. She not only rejects Trump's claim of anti-white sentiment but completely reframes the issue. This is not about being anti-white, she asserts. You're promoting anti-humanist ideals here. Whoopi effectively exposes Trump's rhetoric as not just racist but fundamentally against human values. The impact of Whoopi's statement? It was like unveiling the truth in the middle of a sea of nonsense. Viewers at home likely cheered so loudly that neighbors might have mistaken it for a Super Bowl celebration. Beyond being a compelling TV moment, but it rallied everyone who's ever wanted to put Trump in his place regarding his anti-white rhetoric. And the best part, Whoopi's outrage wasn't solitary. The entire panel of The View stood united in their emphatic rejection of Trump's latest verbal barrage. Joy Bihar's Rai, oh please, was the perfect finishing touch to this moment of shutdown. Whoopi was ready to roast Trump like a marshmallow over a dumpster fire, and she had backup. The whole view panel was geared up, delivering a scorching critique hotter than President Trump's face after a botched spray tan. It was like having your friends back you up in an argument, but with a group of sharp, incensed women on national TV dissecting the potential future of American democracy, not debating who owes whom a drink. Talk about intense pressure. Joy Bihar took the lead, serving up sarcasm so sharp it could slice through steel. Essentially, she quipped, remember when this guy was president and a bunch of people died from COVID, it's a reminder we can't afford to forget. And there's more. Sunny Hostin stepped up next, going the extra mile. She delved into the unitary executive theory if you're thinking, unitary executive what? Don't worry, I've got you covered. It's just a fancy way of saying Trump and his allies want to consolidate power in the White House, almost like a monarchy with worse hair, if you can believe it. Sonny didn't hold back. 
She quickly labeled this idea anti-American more swiftly than Trump could tweet witch hunt in all caps. She passionately defended the checks and balances that prevent our government from resembling an out-of-control reality TV show. Then there was Alyssa Farah Griffin, a former Trump insider. Yes, you heard that right. With first-hand experience of the chaos, her portrayal wasn't flattering. She voiced concerns over the type of people Trump might surround himself with if re-elected. Think they won't be the sharpest tools in the shed. Trump seems intent on hiring loyalists and election conspiracy theorists, turning the White House into a chorus of parrots trained to squawk rigged election on command. But here's where things get serious. The panel wasn't just critiquing Trump's ego trip, they were genuinely worried about the implications for all of us. From voting rights to abortion rights and beyond, they peered into the future and saw echoes of The Handmaid's Tale instead of progress. When Sarah Haynes weighed in on Trump's stance on abortion, it was more chilling than a scene from a Stephen King novel. She highlighted the potential for severe state-level legislation, such as the Life at Conception Act which could effectively outlaw abortion upon fertilization. It's as if they aim to post no trespassing signs on every American uterus. What specific remark of Whoopi's made Trump reach for the Pepto-Bismol? It all started when the orange figurehead began boasting about his role in overturning Roe v. Wade. That's like poking a bear, or in this case, poking Whoopi. With unwavering clarity, Trump congratulated himself for ending something all legal scholars, from both sides, wanted Sonny Hostin promptly refuted this claim, stating, not all legal scholars agree with you facts one. Trump's alternate reality but here's where it gets intense. Whoopi unleashed her fury with the force of a thousand outraged women, as if ready to breathe fire. She sharply retorted, I've had this right for 50 years, and you've taken it away from me. You boast to me I strip away my ability to decide for myself as a woman, and then expect my support, or hurt. That must sting more than a damaged combover in a windstorm. Whoopi wasn't just angry she was speaking up for every woman who sees her body as a battleground in politics. She held nothing back, believe me. But Whoopi wasn't finished. She was just getting started. She continued, The idea of some man deciding what happens with my body is abhorrent to me, preach. Oh, sister. She channeled the frustration of women everywhere who have had to defend their bodily autonomy against male control. Being the class act she is, Whoopi then laid out her stance on abortion rights. No one needs to have an abortion. It's not something anyone desires. I hope you never have to go through it, but then she added, if you find yourself in that situation, I want to support you. I respect your decision because I don't know your circumstances. Meanwhile, the rest of the view panel nodded in agreement so vigorously it looked like a heavy metal concert. Joy Bihar didn't hold back, labeling President Trump as a lying liar who lies according to her. His pitch boils down to vote for me, put me in the White House, my, and keep me out of Leavenworth ouch. That's a burn. Sonny Hostin was equally blunt, calling Trump morally bankrupt and questioning how any self-respecting woman or evangelical could support him. Asking why anyone would vote for a skunk to win Perfume Seller of the Year hits hard. And let's not forget Sarah Haynes, who pointed out that 14 states now have total abortion bans with minimal exceptions due to Trump's influence. It feels like we're stepping back in time to an era where oppressive laws replace progress, like trading dinosaurs for restrictions. Thanks for nothing, uh, Trump. Whoopi's verbal barrage wasn't just a standout TV moment, it ignited a wildfire of public opinion. The fallout. Let's just say it was more explosive than Donald Trump's hair in a windstorm. After Whoopi spoke out, social media erupted like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Facebook was crashing, Twitter was ablaze, and even the lunch ladies at your local school were buzzing about it over mystery meat. Everyone, from teenagers to grandmothers, picked sides faster than you could say cafe. But here's the kicker Whoopi's words didn't just stir the pot they sparked a full-blown chicken riot. Viewers of The View were cheering so loudly it felt like a rally for democracy. Not just another, and then everyone clapped moment. The excitement wasn't confined to the studio audience. Oh no, no. This spread through high school reunions and across liberal Twitter feeds like wildfire. Whoopi's remarks were retweeted faster than free avocado toast, accompanied by a chorus of You Go Girl. Of course, not everyone was thrilled with Whoopi's takedown. Hold on to your MAGA hats, folks Trump's staunch supporters cried fake news faster than you can say alternative facts it was like watching toddlers throw a tantrum upon learning Santa isn't real. You might wonder, so what? In American politics, this is just another day, but here's where it gets intriguing this wasn't just Whoopi versus Trump. 
it was a testament to the power of language in shaping public opinion. Whoopi didn't just criticize Trump she tapped into a reservoir of resentment that had been building like pressure inside a volcano, and when she finally let it out, whoa, it was like witnessing a political earthquake in real time. The big question now is what this means for Trump's campaign. Judging by the reaction to Whoopi's remarks, Trump might want to consider picking up a new hobby. Knitting, perhaps? They say it's quite therapeutic. Let's face it, folks. When a beloved TV personality can rally a whole studio audience by calling out your BS, you might have a problem. It's like trying to sell fake ice to Eskimos who can surf the internet. And it's not just liberals raising eyebrows here. Even some Republicans are feeling uneasy. Trump's insistence on hiring only supporters has Republican lawmakers sweating more than a snowman in July, as pointed out by Alyssa Farah Griffin.